Jitters, comedy. How do you write comedy? Jeez, I don't, I don't know how you write comedy. I, it, it's no different than writing anything else, as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's just, they're all hard to write. But did you set out purposely to say this is going to be a, a comedic play? Well, how, how Jitters came about was uh, Bill and I were in New York City well, looking at theater, looking at plays. We always like to go down every, every once in a while and see some plays. We were down there and we went to see uh, David Mamet's A Life in the Theater. It was at the uh, Lucille Lortel Theater. Um, well, it was actually called the Theater de Lise in those days. It's now called the Lu Lucille Lortel Theater. And uh, we, we saw the play, and we're, we left the theater. We're walking up the street, and Bill said to me, um, what do you think? I said, I didn't care for it, Bill. He said, I didn't either. He said, you know what? He said, you could write a better play about the theater than that. I, I said, you think so? He said, yeah. So I went home and started making notes for Jitters right away. And Jitters, of course, is what Bill and I went through putting on Leaving Home with the Tarragon. Right. That's where that comes from. So the, the quitting on opening night, all 15 that, minutes before the curtain is. Yeah, all that's. And of course, some experiences from other productions. But basically, the germ of the play is what we went through putting on that play here. And I had the title it immediately. When I first sat down to write the play, I just wrote jitters at the top of the, I don't, know, I don't even know why I did that. But I thought it was going to be about fear. But I wanted to be fear in a funny way. I thought jitters was a funny title. So, and, I, and I never changed the title. It's interesting to see you're writing a comedy about fear because when you talk about life and death situations, they're all based on fear. Yeah, absolutely. I've always thought comedy is the root of all comedy is fear. Yeah. Oh, desperation. Desperation is even stronger. And I think that's the, the characters in, in Jitters are all desperate. Especially the Phil Masterrakis. <laughs> <laughs> Based on my good friend George Spurdakis. George did four productions of that play. <laughs> oh, God. But if everyone in the theater was sane and well balanced, <laughs> first it wouldn't be very exciting. Well, there'd be, no, there'd be no plays anyway, so if they're all <laughs> sane and well balanced. And what about neurotics? I mean, maybe there's more on my side of the my side of the of of the profession. I mean, certainly there is a sprinkling of neurotics in every generation, which can overtake productions. They just overpower them. Yeah. Uh, the polite term is high maintenance, but yeah. Well, well, you know, when, when, when we did the, uh, the original production of Leaving Home, Sean Sullivan came in one day with a note from his doctor saying he couldn't go on. He was going to quit the show. I had to talk him out of it. Bill and I spent a whole afternoon talking him out of it. And of course, when we did it down in the States, Roly Hugel had to, had to hold Roly's hand for about two weeks. He was going to quit every day because he thought it was, he was ruining the play. It's at Long Wharf. Yeah, at Long Wharf. It was brilliant. He ran for six months there. But um, <laughs> Roly was convinced he was ruining the play. Why? I don't know why. David, I'm ruining this play. I said, no, you're not. You're going to be wonderful. Of course, he got wonderful reviews. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> He's neurotic. He was neurotic. <laughs> Thank God. How talented he was. And so while Jitters was playing at Long Wharf, um, along comes Noises Off. Yeah, that's, that, that was a tragedy there. Because Noises Off was written and produced two years uh, after Jitters. But it got, there, it got to Broadway first. Right. So you had interest for Jitters on Broadway and... We had eight offers to go to Broadway. Eight offers. I ch Bill and I chose the wrong person. We chose Arthur Cantor, who had produced um, on Golden Pond, and he turned out to be the wrong guy. He was like, I liked him personally. He was 
like an old Spencer Tracy guy with his braces and his white shirt, you know. However, he was the wrong guy. And June Havoc was in it. She wouldn't do the play, as written. And then another actor named Jack Aronson, he wouldn't do the play, as written. So they were demanding changes? Yeah. Because they were asking changes of the wrong writer. The uh, wrong writer. This guy from Newfoundland and Toronto didn't feel like changing the script for some actors mm. or directors. Well, actually, I made some changes for them, but... Uh, you know. Did Bill put pressure on you, saying, David, no, come no, on, we no. can get to Broadway if you change? No, it was, it was like the first reading of the play. I stood there li listening to this reading and knowing that I was screwed. It was so awful, the reading. And um, when it was over, June Havoc said to, uh, to Bill, I want to talk to him alone, me. So she took me into this room sat me down on a chair and said, listen, kid, you're going to make a million dollars from this show. And I'm thinking, no, I'm going to make more than that. I believe I was. So uh, she said, but the trouble is, I'm the star of this show and I'm not even in it. She wanted all the funny lines that, that Patrick was getting and oh, Phil was getting. They were too funny. She, she wanted some of those lines. Of course, when we told George, he went, you know, he just went crazy. <laughs> so how did the deal fall apart? Well, it fell apart when uh, we went to Philadelphia and we, we got bad, re bad reviews for, that, for the opening in Philadelphia. Um, so then we had proof that uh, to get, we, we, want, we, we tried to get rid of June Havoc and Jack Aronson. Right. And we, Bill and I believe this is true. We, we even went to the producer and offered to give up our royalties, both Bill and myself, if they would fire them, those two people, those two actors, and they wouldn't do it. Now, the only reason is there must have been a... Yeah. June must have had a lot of money in the show. That's the only thing we could come up with. Because they sat there for about 15 minutes, the producer and the associate producer, with their mouths open after that offer. I mean, nobody in the history of the theater had ever offered to give up their royalties. But we did, if they would get rid of them. And we brought in other directors from New York who saw, there was one, one director who had seen the show five or six times, a very famous man. He said, get rid of them. But they wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. It was terribly painful. Because we all, we all knew what we had in our hands. We, we had a show that everybody in New York was talking about. Cab drivers were sending people to it, you know, and everything else. Mike Nichols at, at the theater had the, had the flop. We had the hit. But you never made it. Did it come from Philadelphia? No, but it, was, it was running in, in the, uh, New Haven right. at the Long Wharf. Oh, I see, I see. For right. six months. Yeah. Mike Nichols had a musical there that, that got bad reviews. We had the hit. And losing that pipeline to that kind of success, was that difficult for you? It was painful. But I, I, I just figured I'd come back from, with something else. Oh, with another play? Yeah, with another play. <clears throat> and? It didn't happen. <laughs> it's all about timing. Right. And would the absence, if Noises Off was not present, would, would the judges have done better? <laughs> We um, see that one of the problems was we were, we were offered to take the show immediately to Broadway. But the problem was poor Bill, he had, a, he had to come back here and do a show. And, and the show flopped. Right. And um, meanwhile, Noises Off got to Broadway first. So that was, that was the end of that. Is that a large regret in your life or that a small is. regret? It's a very, very big, painful regret. Well, it's not a regret. I mean, I didn't, I didn't do anything. So it's nothing that I, mm -hmm. I could have done, except I made a wrong choice with a producer. That, that I regret, I guess. Did you and Bill choose that producer? Or yeah, we, we did. 
Bill and I were like two hillbillies, you know. We, we met her, we met June having, she just charmed us out of the trees. We were batting her big blue eyes at us, and we fell like, like a couple of hicks. So we, we went back to Arthur and said, oh yeah, she's wonderful, we'll, we'll go with her. Well, it didn't work out. June was looking for a vehicle for herself. Yeah. She said, oh, boys, it's, 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 it's an ensemble play. It's all about us. But that's not the way she saw it. <laughs> it's all about her. Yeah. So were there serious attempts to go down to New York after that? W with that play? With, or with other plays of yours? Well, you know, I was, I was on Broadway with the, uh, with the uh, Seagull. I and I was on Broadway without the Fields Lately. Oh. So, um, but um, not the, no. The one that went, the one that should have taken off was Jitters, and it mm -hmm. never had a chance. And how was Up the Fields received? It got it got some good reviews. Chris uh, Chris Cooper played Ben. Right. Um, it ran it ran eight previews and eight performances and closed. When the, the original off-Broadway production, you couldn't get a seat. Walter Kerr, the critic, tried four times to get in to see that show and couldn't get in. It got rave reviews from the New York Times and the Post. We got all kinds of offers to go to Broadway. And I went to Broadway with the same cast, an extra couple of weeks rehearsal. Different critics came, nibbled away at, the, at us, and right. ended up being... I guess a flop, in one sense. But that's not, as I read it, that's not really important to the core of who David French no, is. No, it is. I didn't think it was a flop. I thought it was a brilliant show. But Chris Cooper was wonderful as Ben. He was this 23-year-old Missouri tense actor. Right. He was, he was wonderful. Now, you saw the other fields lately that I played Ben in. Yeah. And I was not the actor who was here at Tarragon. I guess I was cast for TV reasons. I don't know why that, I was that cast. That was Tim, Tim Henry. That's right, Tim Henry. And I must admit, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I had, when I went back and directed the play, I thought, when I saw Ben's story later in life when I read it, I couldn't believe how little I knew what I was doing or what the play was about when I did it. Was that because it was film? No, because I was young and totally inexperienced and didn't know how to read a play and didn't know how to hear a story, right? Uh, I think that's why. But I was just riveted with embarrassment later in life at how little I understood of the part I was supposed to be playing. And I forget that ever since, and you know, I try to correct for it in other ways. What did you think? I guess I, guess I felt it was a bit too stagey. Me or the production? The whole thing. This was a production where the Mike Newell, the yeah. director, Wonderful had a director. set built in the middle of the studio with had windows and pieces of wall yeah. that moved up and down so he could run a 15 minute sequence and from room to room inside the set and the cameras would move around us as they shot and poke through a window or a wall piece. It was a very clever yeah. uh, concept. Well, he was a very clever guy. But It ha the play has to, uh, has to work on between Jacob and, and Ben, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Or there's no play. Yeah, we sort of talked about this in What's terms that? of... Well, you know, when you, when you were starting, it, w the, it was the Canadian play. It was creeps. It was writing. It was all about words and actors written by... And now we're into imagistic theater. We're into more musical elements. We're into abs more abstractions. Is that something that you look forward to in theater, or...? I look forward to going to the theater every time I go to the theater and being uh, entertained. That's all I look forward to, being entertained. I don't know what else I would look forward to. I'm not looking for new forms or anything else. I'm, I don't care what the form is. Can you describe who you're seeing in the picture? Who am I seeing? Yeah. What do you mean? I'm, so, I'm looking at myself. This is a young man with long hair. Sure is. <laughs> oh, Christ. He's got long hair, too. This is your life, David. <laughs> Holy God. Now the hair is kind of white. 
This is not a mirror, or maybe it is. Holy moly. Where did all the years go? Wow. They're in the plays, David. That's where the years are, and they'll live forever because those plays will be around forever. I mean, that's, that's where I envy you. My work disappears. It blows away, and yours will be produced again and again and again and again and then look back on. So that's where I envy you. I hope you're right. I hope so, too. <laughs>